Welcome to Opinion Journal Live. I'm Dan Henninger. Well, the con conversation continues over the tragedy at Newtown and is covering a lot of ground. President Obama spoke about it uh, last night. Let's take a look at what he said. We can't tolerate this anymore. These tragedies must end. And to end them, we must change. We will be told that the causes of such violence are complex, and that is true. No single law, no set of laws, can eliminate evil from the world or prevent every senseless act of violence in our society. In the coming weeks, I'll use whatever power this office holds to engage my fellow citizens, from law enforcement to mental health professionals to parents and educators in an effort aimed at preventing more tragedies like this. Well, that, of course, was President Obama. Uh, I'm here with uh, Opinion Page editor Paul Jago. Paul, good to see you. I did. Uh, the president suggested he was going to take a very comprehensive approach to this problem. And it does raise the question of whether going at it in that way, basically trying anything that might work, uh, is going to get us where we want to go with this problem because this didn't happen yesterday. People have thought about this for a long time. Uh, I agree with that. Uh, he, he made a very uh, strong statement. Uh, I mean, uh, the eloquent uh, uh, association with the, the mourning of, of the, the town and so on was, was very worthwhile. But the substantive portion of what he talked about, which was substantive in the sense of foreshadowing policy, uh, was a very strong statement that these tragedies must end and we must do something. Presidents don't typically say that unless they really mean it. So presumably he will have more to say specifically about a variety of possible public policy options. But as you say, these things have been, uh, this ground has been gone over quite a bit. And uh, we'll see if he comes up with anything new that can really make a difference. I hope, in my own personal opinion, that would be r related to mental health. Well, uh, on that subject, that's we're talking about maybe civil commitment of people who pose a danger to society. Or something called assisted treatment. Or assisted treatment. But I have to say, Paul, I've looked into that a little bit, and there's a reason why it doesn't happen now, and that's because there is a lot of interests that are committed to not doing that sort of thing, very powerful interest in this, the mental health community. Right. Uh, this is a deinstitutionalization right. lobby and people who have a civil libertarian bent and, and, and that sort of thing. But maybe, maybe we have now crossed a, a line here where people understand that, the, that there are some societal uh, 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 bona fides here that need yeah. to be accommodated too. I, I only raise that because I agree with you, it's difficult. But that seems to me the linkage here now is uh, in the, some of these mass murders have been so, uh, two mental illness are so clear. Yeah. Jared Lee Loeffner uh, in Gabby Gifford's case, uh, you had Jared Holmes in Aurora, you have uh, uh, Cho in the Virginia Tech case, and now this one. You know, if you could push a little bit further, the Columbine High School shootings, and then people forget there was one in Chardon High School in Ohio. In February, three young people were killed. The fact, all of these involve young men around 20 years old, right. and I think mental health specialists have actually been able to narrow it down to this particular demographic of people. It's not guys in their 40s, it's not women, it's there's something about these young men going through a passage under stress. Well, I'm not a psychiatrist and I don't play one on TV, but uh, uh, I do know from reading that there's no question that this period in, 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 in the lifetimes of kind of post-adolescence, adolescent, post-adolescence, uh, in particular is a time when you do see an awful lot of mental illness assert itself. In, in young men in particular, and they seem to be the ones who assert, and young women too, but they, the, the men seem to be the ones who assert themselves violently. Paul, what about the guns? This is something we have spent a lot of time with trying to legislate this issue. It's going to be back in January. Well, and I think it, it, the president foreshadowed that he seems to be um, uh, looking at proposing something. This again is well-trod ground. I don't, uh, uh, I don't know what it will yield. Um, you know, you have to ask yourself, Let's say that some of the uh, proposals that have been on the table and were discussed by some people, maybe banning assault weapons uh, uh, again, or banning so-called assault weapons, or banning uh, uh, 
rapid uh, uh, magazine clips, large, right. large, large magazine clips, would they have made a difference? Well, I'm not so sure it would have. Remember, the guns that he used, he had available to him included two sidearms. And those could have, those include reasonably large clips. He could have gone in there and, and, uh, and used those yeah. uh, and done almost as much damage. So it's, uh, uh, it's not clear to me, and these were, again, his mother's guns. Yeah, sure. They were legally acquired. Uh, you know, you may look at uh, trying to limit the ability of people who do have demonstrated mental illness to get weapons. That's something we should look at. But some of the rest of these things, I think they're more emotional responses than they are actual serious proposals. Yeah. All right, Paul, we're going to leave it right there.